Testicular cancer is the most common solid malignancy in young men. Key risk factors include KFCC, Kleinfelter syndrome, a family history, cryptorchidism, which is another term for undescended testes or cryptically placed testes, and cannabis use. It's classified into germ cell tumors, GCTs, and non-germ cell tumors. 95% are GCTs, which can then be further divided into seminomas or non-seminomas, roughly in a 50-50 ratio. Non-seminominous GCTs include embryonal carcinoma, yolk sac tumors, and karyocarcinomas, along with teratomas. Pathophysiologically, GCTs develop from developmentally arrested cells in the fetal testes called gonocytes. After birth, sometimes these gonocytes fail to differentiate further into spermatogonia, which are like the progenitor cells that undergo spermatogenesis to eventually form mature sperm. These arrested gonocytes transform into malignant germ cells. This is called germ cell neoplasia in situ. Now at this point, they turn into either seminomas or embryonal carcinoma, which can further differentiate into either teratomas, choriocarcinomas, or yolk sac tumors. Clinically, the most common presentation of testicular cancer is a 33-year-old man with a painless testicular lump. However, 10% have acute pain from rapid tumor growth, which may cause intratesticular hemorrhage. 10% present with signs of metastases, especially to the lungs, 2% with gynecomastia because of high levels of beta-HCG secreted by the tumors. The assessment of testicular cancer requires scrotal examination. Now, this involves assessing for tenderness, irregularity, size, bilateral testicular descent, and masses. Extratesticular exams should also be included, like a lung auscultation, checking for gynecomastia, and palpable lymph nodes, especially supraclavicular ones. The most important investigation is testicular ultrasound, which has a very high sensitivity and specificity. Tumor markers can be used for the purpose of staging, prognosis, and monitoring. These include alpha theta protein or AFP, beta-HCG, and lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH. If it's suspected based on ultrasound, patients should almost always undergo a radical inguinal orchidectomy to facilitate histopathologic assessment. This entails three things. Removal of the entire testicle and epididymis, ligation of the spermatic cord at the level of the internal inguinal ring, and surgery performed via an inguinal incision. A transcrotal approach or a percutaneous biopsy should not be done because it can result in metastatic seeding. For the purposes of TNM staging, S1 is tumor localized to the testicle, S2 is retroperitoneal lymph node involvement, S3 is distant metastases. Staging requires tumor markers, but only after orchidectomy. Staging also requires a CT chest, abdomen, and pelvis, but CNS imaging isn't usually required. PET scans don't have a role in initial staging. Management is based on this stage. In general, S1 usually involves orchidectomy and surveillance. S2 usually involves chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or the resection of retroperitoneal lymph nodes. S3 requires chemotherapy as of a 2025 JAMA review. Now, some quick considerations. Optimal outcomes occur at specialist centers, especially with advanced disease. Family planning and fertility preservation are often patient priorities, and mental health complications are super common. Common. Prosthetics can sometimes help improve body image. Let's summarize with some mnemonics. Risk factors can be remembered as KFCC, Kleinfelter syndrome, family history, cryptorchidism, and cannabis use. And presentation can be remembered as two tens or a painless big bend. This highlights that 2% of the time, gynecomastia can be a presentation. 10% of the time can be from a metastatic presentation. Another 10% of the time, there is painful testicles because of tumor growth. And a painless big bend reminds you a painless testicular mass is the most common presentation. Thanks for watching Townsend Teachings.